Hello, and welcome to the 13th episode of Unfiltered, which I'm unspeakably excited about because um, Ian Lee is my Hello, James guest. O'Brien. Hello, Ian Lee. And I'm a little bit... I, I, I mean, this is not what you might call the most produced and scripted of podcasts in history. Oh. It's very free-ranging. Okay. But, but, um, but I suspect that this might be even more free-ranging than the previous 12 episodes. I'm really nervous <laughs> because I'm a big fan of yours. Oh, shut up. Uh, let's, you know, blow smoke up the A. I'm a big fan of yours. But I know you've got a, a, a killer blow. You you know, you're like a game of Tekken are or you something. Worried? Are you worried that I might bring you down? Yeah, I might totally. dismantle you and it will all go viral. No, not, not at Joe. Joe's a much gentler and more free-formed environment and the one in which we met then we i'll used, destroy you we, that's it exactly we met we, we, we worked at the same radio station for a while we worked at lbc but normally i start at the beginning of someone's life right and work towards where they are now yes but with you i'm going to start with where you are now and then go back to the beginning of your life and then work up towards just before now okay are you with me a little bit of time travel i think we yeah. can do this because yes. obviously going into the jungle and doing oh, i'm a celebrity man. has I, I, literally changed your life it was the uh, here's the thing they've asked me four three or four times to do it if you know if i'd do it and it, they've been proper kind of offers we want you to do it um and they asked me last year um, I think someone had dropped out because they said we need you but we'd want you to do it in a week you, right. you have to come out in a week and I've always said no why? And, uh, why? because I didn't okay for loads of reasons Be- initially I would say no and there's quotes of me out there that people threw at me because I, <laughs> I, I said it was beneath me I said I didn't need it because it, you, you're kind of putting your hand up I thought then and saying your career is over um, I didn't uh, I didn't need the money when they'd asked me before and I didn't think I was kind of well enough in the head I didn't think I was mentally strong enough to cope with the battering that you get Mm. inside reality shows because I've worked on Big Brother shows so I know the kind of intensity of it but also um, uh, you know my brief flirtation with fame 20 years ago I had two stories about me in the paper over five years okay so I've never exposed myself so, well, <laughs> so much. Um, you know, I've never done a show where I would be so exposed to kind of the press and people ah, and stuff. Because you have exposed yourself. It's part of, of what, what you do on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but not in, the, not in the, the, what would you call it, almost like the amphitheatre of reality yeah, television. Yeah, yeah, and the tabloid You put a lot look. of yourself out there in your other work. But yeah. this is, you lose control on it. You lose control over this, and it's a bigger audience, and th- th- things get magnified. You know, and give me an example. When I came out of the jungle, we're going all over the place already, but it yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. When I came out, um, I found out that the press had been knocking on my mother-in-law's front door, right? Who's this lovely old Greek lady who's got nothing to do with my world of, sure. you know, whatever. And... Uh, and that it, that just really shocked me. And they were sniffing around to find out what was going on in my marriage and whether I was doing it to pay for my mum's care home mm. and all of this nonsense. And that just, I find that terrifying. I find yes. that terrifying. Even now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just we, weird that, that, that this machine engulfs you. And it's gone now. The press aren't interested in me anymore now. But the, for, no, but, the, but you have changed status forever. Yes. Haven't you? Yeah. Don't you think? I by don't know, definitely. I'm being ex... ex I'm a celebrity. Even, yeah. even you, you will be fair game in a way that you weren't before. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm <clears> fair <throat> game. But that that kind of pop star buzz sure. yes. lasted for two weeks after right. I came out, and then it was gone. And a friend of mine um, collected all of the cuttings from the newspapers and made a scrapbook. Like, it's the weirdest thing. Yes. Seeing that thing. Um, uh, depressed comic Ian Lee, forty-four. That weird thing of having your age <laughs> in there. <laughs> the value of your house. Yeah, it, I'll, it, everything. Well. You know, it, it, depressed it, comic. It, it, depressed comic. And I said, I'm not. I'm not a comic. I don't, they, kept, <laughs> they kept calling me a comedian. I'm not a comedian. I'm a broadcaster. So it was strange, but it has changed things forever. I'll give you the 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 the, the kind of example. The first example where it really hit me. Okay, people know who I am now. Um, I stayed on, when we came out, everyone flew back the next day and I went to New Zealand for a few days to see my sister and my Mm. my family out there. And then I came back and a week had passed, so that excitement had gone. And the next day, the day after I landed, I took my boys to see Mr. Tumble um, in Peter Pan at the um, Reading, uh, the Hexagon in Reading. And um, we just walked into the theatre just as a school party was walking in and one lad turned around and went, bloody hell, it's Ian Lee. Oh, no, he doesn't. They don't say your last name because it's always it. Bloody hell, it's Ian. I went, all right, mate. And he went, can I get a selfie? And I went, yeah, yeah, sure you can. 
And then en masse, it was a school party of 190 children. 189 other children all turned around and started pushing me up against the wall. Can we get a selfie? And I said, listen, come and get me in the interval. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll do it. And in the interval, 190 kids came over, all with asking for selfies. And my boys, who were <laughs> nearly six and eight, you know, they were just sat there like, my, well, my eldest couldn't look at me. He just found it mortifyingly embarrassing. Really? And my youngest was just in hysterics because these p- people wanted a picture with their yeah. silly just dad. Just silly, silly old dad. Yeah, well, silly old why? dad. Why? T- 12-year-olds in the street now come up to me. Can I get a selfie? Of course you can. It's but, fun for you. Oh, uh, it's hilarious because it's so silly. It's mm. really silly. Uh, I think when I, you know, I had this brief flirtation with it years ago, I, I took it quite seriously. Well, let's go, let's go back to go that. Because the very first time yes. I saw you, and you, you don't know this, was through the window of a of a pub in the back streets of um, just yeah. near Blackfriars Bridge. Which called... side of the glass was I on? So in you, you, you were on the other side. Okay, I was on the wrong unusual. side or the right side. It was a pub called the Rose and Crown where I used to go and hide from my news editor when I was show business editor on the Daily Express. Really? There were there were pubs that all the journalists went to right. where I'd normally be. Yeah. But on the days where I had nothing, like literally no stories, no nothing, I'd go and hide in there and nurse what was usually a hangover. And I was sitting there one day having a bit of a crisis. Yeah. A genuine sort of, why are you doing this? You've, you, well, you've ended up as a show business editor in a national newspaper. Mm. And you hate it. You hate every bloody minute of it. Why are you doing this? What else can you do? And I looked up, and there were you, doing Vox Pops for the 11 o'clock show, <laughs> literally outside the window of the pub, and having the whale of a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that a show fun. I loved, yeah. and, and which, you know, has, has, has rightly gone down in TV history. But I remember thinking... And you looked so comfortable and confident. And I did honestly think, a little bit of me thought, I could do that. Yeah. I could do something. Like, How has he ended up yeah. doing all I, that? So you, you had pretty I don't much know. an amazing job yeah, it did, while but, you were still in short trousers. I did, but I mean, I got that. I got the 11 o'clock show, I guess, when I was 24, 25, because it's the 20th anniversary next year. Yeah. yeah. And we're all going to get together and have a party. No, we're not. I don't see those guys. <laughs> um, but, um, but, but the whole time I was doing that show, I was waiting. And this, this is a really common thing. I've had this most of my career. I was waiting for the tap on the shoulder saying, I'm really sorry, we've got the wrong person. Yes. You haven't got a clue what you're doing. And I was, I may have looked confident. I was filled with terror. You know, I was filled with absolute terror doing that whole thing completely out of my depth. How did it happen? How did you? Um, I was doing, I was doing stand-up comedy, but I was never very good at stand-up comedy. Are you sure? Yeah, I, I definitely. No, I know you were, you're sure you were doing stand-up I was comedy. De- yes, I was stood there holding a microphone. Are you sure you weren't any good? Oh, no, I was terrible. I, I was, never I was know hit- with you how much of it is, because what would I call it? I don't want to say insecurity, but you've just described yeah. insecurity. No, I was I was really hit and miss. Okay. I would get like one hit out of every 20 gigs, which right. is not a great ratio. No. For, you know, My soul is right. And again, an old thing to do oh, if, you, if, you, if you've got esteem, is self Well, I, I wanted to be an actor, but right. I couldn't get any acting work. So the thing was, you, well, you go and be a stand-up comedian and you stand there and it was it was horrendous. Um, and in, through doing that, um, I ended up doing a... Uh, I ended up on a local radio station in Milton Keynes, Milton Keynes FM 103 Horizon, working with some really cool people. Yeah. But I was Ian in Black Thunder. Ian McCartney was the name they gave me because there was another woman there who had the surname Lee and you couldn't have two people the same surname. And I was Ian in Black Thunder, which was this black Jeep. And, you know, two or three times during the breakfast show, they said, let's find out what Ian in Black Thunder is up to. And I'd be outside the shopping centre in Milton Keynes bribing people to come on the radio and not swear and not, you know. So there was a real Jeep? It was a real Jeep. I kept crashing it. I can't drive big vehicles. I drive a Polo now and I can't drive. I'm going to take you back again. How did you get that job? I had um, an <coughs> agent who just put me up for it. He just can't, I, so you, I, this was after drama school. You did drama at Middlesex. I did performing arts at Middlesex at Middlesex yeah. University. And it's a good course. I and was a proper a, degree. I was a prof. Got a two one in yeah, yeah. jumping on a table and singing, <laughs> and uh, you know Arto. But and to Brett. have an agent out of that, you might, there was only two or three people in your year who came out of that course with an agent. It, what, it, yeah, I'm, I'm policing to... the self deprecation. No, this and I'm, I'm 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 going to be re- okay. I'm going to be really straight with you. Oh, and the self deprecation yeah. is going to be a minimum. This agent, I, I was <laughs> was I, I, I'm going to be careful. He didn't really want to represent me. Because I kept saying to him, will you represent me? And he said, no. He had people like uh, Mackenzie Crook was one of his. Right. And, uh, he was on the same course as you. No, was no, he? no. We, oh, okay. we met doing stand-up. Right, you're right. So this is Mackenzie before he got famous. Yeah. And he was representing Mackenzie. And I kept saying to this agent, will you represent me? And he said, I don't think you're ready. I don't think you're ready. And then somehow he got me this job on this radio oh, show. I see. But, but, but I, I was there for six months and I hated it. Soul destroying. You know, I couldn't do it. I wanted to be kind of arch and psychedelic and, and surreal. And, what and did you hate about it? Going up to people 
who didn't want to talk to you and yeah. having to because that 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 I, that's a bit like being a gossip columnist at yeah. a party and they're going up to someone who doesn't really want to talk to you. Yeah. And try, some people are brilliant at it. Oh, I, I, I hated, hated it. it. I hated doing the vox pops on the eleven o'clock show. My favourite right. part of it, but is that thing of going up to you go up to a hundred people a day. Hi, can I? Uh, no, fuck off. You know, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of people punching at me. Um, so I, I left this radio show after six months, and on the last week I was there, a fax came through from Talkback Production saying, we are making a, co a satirical comedy show for Channel 4. We want to see comedians and DJs and presenters and actors and everyone. And someone handed it to me, it handed it to me almost on the last day saying, oh, this might be good for you. And I, t I gave it to my this agent. He said, no, I don't think you're right for it. <laughs> I said, no, I really want to go for this one. And he said, no, I don't think you're right for it. So I'm not going to, honestly, trust me, your thing will come and it's not this. Yeah. Um, and so I put myself up for it. And it was, I was skint. I had moved back to my mum's house. I was really badly in debt. And I thought this is going to be the last audition, last thing I go for. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to go and get a proper job. Seriously. And um, and I went in and I, and I got it. I, that was the 11 o'clock show, you know, and I got. What, what did you do at the audition? How did it work? Um, I yeah I can remember I, I had to turn up in a suit and I thought the suit was it was my only suit and I thought it was a really smart suit um, <laughs> but everyone was laughing at the suit going that's a brilliant suit I was like what do you mean and, so, and eventually I found out that they they it was too big it was looked like I looked like David Byrne in um, Stop Ma Making Sense and um, so they thought I'd come in a deliberately comedy suit in a, in a as a bold move. And I had to do, we had to go out on the street and vox pops, <laughs> vox pop people. And um, and I just was silly and stupid and dumb. And the, the guy that shot it said, well, I don't think that went very well, but thanks very much for your time. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. A guy called Andrew Newman, who now is yeah, quite he's big happy. cheese, isn't he? BAFTA, yeah. Mm. He said, no, I don't think that was right, but thanks. I was like, oh, oh well. And then um, a gentleman who's now dead, a brilliant producer called Harry Thompson. Yes, of course. Um, saw it and he, he phoned me up and he said, actually, I think there's... I think there's something here. And I didn't really know who Harry Thompson was. You, you look him up, you know, he's a yeah, legend. legend. Absolutely. And um, it, he invited me in to just come in and make some silly films. And it was all, it all seemed to be a series of coincidences and luck and a little bit of chutzpah. So I was kind of initially brought in to make these silly Vox Pops. I was going to do two Vox Pops a week. The show went out three nights a week. And I was kind of, they secured me quite early on. I think mm. I may have been the first booking that they had. Um, and they had two, they wanted three hosts and they, they got Fred McCauley and I sat in on all the auditions and they saw everybody. You think of a comedian that was around in the late 90s and they saw them, you know, Mitch, Ben, Dom, Jolly, all these people were seen. Yeah. They settled on Fred McCauley and Brendan Burns. Yeah. And um, they couldn't find, the week before, the, it was, it was, Wednesday and the series was starting the next Tuesday and they still hadn't found a third person and I went do you know what I think I could do that and they also looked at each other and went do you know what we've got nothing to lose okay fine and that and that was it and that's wow. how I got the presenting job on it it's crazy it is a bit and, it, and it, it, it highlights how close how near and far everything is. Oh in, God, in everything's this game, down to luck. Well, yeah, almost everything. You can't. You can't be a. Complete... There's a little bit of skill, although my skill was at a minimum then, and that you know, again, not self-deprecation. I, I, you know, I, I, sure, it, there was a tiny Come bit off. of skill, but it was, it was, it was primarily luck. It is that thing of being in the right place at the right time. And um, as I've got older, you can. I've discovered you can kind of make those moments. Um, work a little bit better by recognizing that you're in the right place at the right time yes. and kind of grabbing it. You, yes. When I was younger, I, it was it was it was luck. It was just being there. But as I've got older, I've I've kind of sensed opportunity and tried to grab it a bit more. Like the jungle, like the talk radio show was me yeah. walking in and you know pretending I'm someone who's good in in meetings. And yes. I went in and said, I hear you're starting this station. You need me to do your late night show. And I'm inside I'm dying. I can't believe you're saying this. No. And I said, you need me to do your late night show because I will, I, I'll bring this, this and this to it. And this is when I was still working at BBC Three Counties and I, I, was, I thought I had a secure job, sure. so I didn't need it. And um, Which and possibly it, gave you a bit more. Yeah. Um, umpa. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely, because I because I, I already had a job. So this was, you know, I wanted this talk radio. I wanted to do a late night show, but I didn't need it because sure. I had a, you know, decent... Yeah, yeah breakfast gig on a local radio station so I went in and and I, I could just sense that there was an energy and I grabbed it do you do you think everybody else is good at meetings yeah yeah 
I, I'm not sure they are. Really? Yeah, I, I think everyone's waiting. Almost everyone, except a kind of Donald Trump type yeah. figure, um, is waiting for the tap on the shoulder. But you're not. Are you saying that you you feel that? Well, possibly in the last couple of years, I felt that I might have a career that will last until retirement. Yeah. For the very first time. Isn't that it funny? Yeah. I think people will find that in really interesting because. Um, well, people think I'm. Well, people thought before I went in the jungle yeah. that I was very confident, and I kind of, you know, blew that one. But you know, you you come across as being very confident in in your in your broadcasting. And in your you life. you have to, don't you? But I'm like you. Yeah. There's, there's 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 I've been in rooms where I'm supposed to be selling myself, and I've I've wanted to die inside. Yeah. I wanted to crawl out of those. What am I doing here? This is ridiculous. Isn't that funny? And and also the the, the waiting for everything to. To, waiting to be found out. Yeah. It's called imposter syndrome, I think. Is it? It's got and a lots, name, has it? I think so. And lots and lots and lots of people who've done this right. podcast of, of the two things that seem to unite almost all the guests we've had are uh, actually mental health is quite a big theme running yep. through all of the talks as well. But but initially, serendipity, the people who, so you have someone like Amanda Yanucci sitting here yeah. who's got talent coming out of every pore. Yeah. And he says it, none of it would have happened without luck. Yeah. With him, it was local radio in Scotland, being in the right place at the right time and being moved into stuff like that. Mm. And also the, the, the consciousness that, that it could all be taken away at any moment. It's not, really? Yes, really. Isn't that funny? I was reminded of how brilliant he is. But there when that wonderful, the, over Christmas, there was that Alan Partridge documentary. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. wasn't it funny, yeah. man? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it yeah. funny? Best ever. The best ever. Just but if you, you should listen to the podcast he did here because it comes... I mean, it's so organic and like you yeah. just described, the aligning of the planets, being in the room at the time and saying, yeah. I think when I had my face pressed up against the window, I thought everyone had a master plan. Yeah, and you yeah. sound as if you still do think that sometimes. Oh, I do. I do. I'm just bumbling around. Yes. Like, I suspect but, most of us are. But there is an element of luck to yes, Chris, because I know people that are way more talented than me and... Um, it's just never happened. It's just yes. they've just not been in the right place. And you mentioned they... all the people that were seen for the eleven o'clock yeah. show. Some of whose careers might have gone on to do oh, yeah. great guns. Some of whose careers won't have done. None of whom would would recognise the hierarchy yeah. as defined by by what that audition, that one audition. It's who you're sitting next yeah. to. It's the mood that the producer's in. But then, I, for a long time after the eleven o'clock show, when it ended, so it was about two two years. It ran for. It ran for two years. Yeah. I, think we did, I did four series, and then there was a fifth one that I I. I Oh God, I, I I got caught up in the whole ego thing of it because you doing you, you go from signing on and being skin to being paid a lot of money, mm. you know, thousands of pounds, and people telling you you're brilliant, hey, yeah. you're brilliant, and um, cut that it's that weird thing of of um, that coupled with the insecurity, coupled with drinking and probably you know taking drugs and stuff that that weren't particularly good for my head. Um, I walked out of the last series of the eleven o'clock show. Five days before it started, terrible behaviour. Really, it's a really I didn't know awful behaviour because everyone. The last series, everyone left, and it was a completely new production right. team. I was the only person that stayed. Oh, okay, and I shouldn't have done. And we did a pilot for it on a Thursday, and the show was going to start on the Tuesday. And the pilot, I didn't think was good enough, and I was terrified. And I, I just walked out. I walked out, and I let down. Awful behaviour, awful, and I let down. I know, 150. 100 people, mm. you know, and they, they had to fight. In the end, John Holmes got, got you know, right, kind of yeah. stepped in at the last minute. Um, awful behaviour. I'm terribly ashamed of it. And it buggered up my career, Wait, you but know. But you were a kid. I, well, I was in a kid. In your defence. Yeah. But it was, it was still... I... I had kind of you know these things that I had when I was young called principles. Yes, of course. And I thought this com this comedy is beneath me. Yes, yes, you know yes. this is a guy that used to go up to people in the street and get them to eat meat and tell them it had Princess Diana DNA in it. You know, and I'm go I'm going this is beneath me. And it was it was kind of arrogance. Was, there's a paradox, and a lot of drug users and drinkers have it. The paradox of of this arrogance of thinking I'm the greatest person in the world, but also coupled with the self loathing mm. and the low self esteem of thinking I'm I'm a worthless piece of shit. And yeah. the, the, the two create this 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 kind of tension where it becomes unworkable. Uh, and it, it also is probably the heart of a lot of creativity. Isn't I it? think that so. The tension between those two things. The word that popped into my mind then when you were talking was gratitude. So now, yeah, you're very grateful for what's happened. You're grateful for what you've got. You were grateful yeah. 
even when you were doing the show on Three Counties. That yep. was you were grateful for Very it. Very grateful. Because we, we know what it's like to contemplate oblivion. We yeah. know what it's like to think, Christ, what am I going to do? I'm going to yeah. have to get an Uber license or something like that if, yeah. if, if the phone doesn't ring soon. Oh, I, you know, I've... I, I, when but there I, was no gratitude then, back then, because it had landed in your lap. There was no gratitude then, and that went on for a while. And there was also a lot of confusion because the 11 o'clock show launched, you know, Ricky Gervais and Mackenzie was on it and Daisy went off to have a, a big career and um, Ali G, all these people. And I was the one that was being touted as the, I remember having a meeting with the head of Channel 4 and that, yes. that you know, the phrase, the next Graham Norton was kind yes. of spoken about me. And then when it didn't happen, partly through self-sabotage, partly through that fear and arrogance combined, partly through not sensing the opportunities yeah. and, the, and the luck, partly not following the luck. I had a lot of resentment. I'm sure. Uh, directed at, at, at Gervais and Sasha Baron Cohen primarily because, you know, they went off to Hollywood to make movies. And I was thinking, well, that, hang on a minute, that was that was my game plan. That was mm. my career. Those bastards have stolen my career. So for years, I had this real resentment and anger towards... It, it's an incredible situation you describe because it's not like the two people that you worked with who were junior members of the team that you were head of yeah. went off to do a bit better. Yeah. You went into borderline oblivion. Yeah. And they went off to be two of the biggest stars on the planet. In the world. Isn't yes. that incredible? It's quite, I mean, it's yeah. almost, if it was a script, they might give it back and say, just look, maybe make them big TV stars yeah. in Britain. Make, make one of them a star. And yeah, but, but Not no, two actual of the biggest... slaying Hollywood yeah. within a decade yeah. of the 11 o'clock. And I, I was constantly reminded of it. it must you know, have, because they were on telly awful. all the time. It, it, was, it was awful. And I drank more and I took more drugs yeah. as a result. Partly as a result, not completely sure. as a result. But yeah, it was it was horrendous, you know, watching this go on. And for uh, for years after that, it was it was it was a darkness in me that yes. I was carrying. That was anger. That was resentment. I couldn't watch any of the stuff and, and they an, did. An unshakable sense of unfairness, presumably, oh, which yeah, is yeah, the yeah, hardest yeah. thing to process. Yeah, and you you say that out loud, and now I realise it does sound silly. But you say it out loud to someone. That's so unfair. Yes. I go, what are you talking about? You, you, you know, you But yeah, I did. I sank into oblivion, yeah. you know, I, I, and was, you know, I did a breakfast show, TV show that followed on from the big breakfast called Rise that I'm really proud of. I really love. It was really a good loved. show. You did it with Kate Lawler for a while. I did it with Kate you? Lawler. But you, again, they, you came in when it had already been cancelled, if memory serves. It, no, well, no, they, they, it, it had been, it, it, they'd launched it as like a sort of news show. I went up for that. After, did you? Yeah. Disaster. For the Mark Durden Smith <laughs> yeah, role yeah. was after nine eleven, <laughs> and they they thought because Rolling News had kind of right, been yeah. born yeah, during nine right, eleven. Yeah. After that, um, they thought well, everyone wants a Rolling News breakfast show. And of course, they didn't. So I think they did that for a year. Um, you but you did well. You see, again, it's that luck thing. Yeah, you did well missing out Possibly. on that because. You know, Mark Dern Smith, great broadcaster. I don't yeah. know what he's doing now. Mostly rugby. Me and Claudia Winkleman tried out together right. for that, and then and then. But neither of us moved. And but, then, of course, but, Claudia's now one of the biggest stars. But the hasn't show. it? You know, it's paid yes, it off. is. It is. It's luck. I mean, luck and judgment. But judgment and luck in that in that yeah. order. But no one. I can't think of anybody who, who who got slapped quite as hard as you did by the fickle fingers of fate. I think I I I yeah. I think I'm partly to blame. Right. You know, I became unworkable. So I took over, and it became a light entertainment show. And it was very, very funny, and it was very strong. And I guess if it wasn't in the shadow of the Big Breakfast, yeah. it would have been a completely different beast. Yeah. No one watched it. Is that right? No one. We had we had a day where we registered zero viewers. That's very hard to do. Noddy. It's like getting a third. Yeah, it takes more effort than getting a first. It doesn't it? But I'm <laughs> listen. I'm glad I did because I'm really proud of it. Uh, once I, I'd never done live TV before. I hadn't done much. Okay. So once I got it, it, the first few months I did it, it was really clunky because it was me holding scripts mm. and stuff, you know, and listening to the earpiece. And it was three months in. Three months in, I suddenly got it. I suddenly thought, this isn't important. None of this is, this matters. And this has kind of been my philosophy for everything I've done since. Everyone was taking it so seriously. We're making this TV show. And it, I, I just one day I, I woke up and went... God, this show doesn't matter. It's not important. It's it's so trivial that it. And once I got that, it was freedom. Yeah. This freedom, and I think after three months, um, and I, and I had this awakening. Um, it just became a joy to do, and it was basically me showing off to my mates for two hours a day, and it was lovely. And at the end, when it got cancelled, and I was it was kind of heartbroken, but I thought, oh, there'll be more work, right? Yeah. And there wasn't. But at the end, the last week, Vic and Bob wrote a review of it saying this is one of the best shows we've oh, ever seen. It. Ian Lee reminds us of a young Clint Eastwood <laughs> and is is this is hilarious and wonderful and it's a shame this is going. And I saw that and I thought, oh okay. Yeah. That 
that is everything to me. That'll that'll do. Um, I'll, I'll carry that on to my next job. And there wasn't a next job in TV. You know, I didn't work for. I didn't work for nine months. How does that? How does that work? You end of the first month, you think, yeah, just around the corner. Something, yeah, something. It's something Mr. McCorber, something will come up. Yeah, something will come. Six nothing. months, seven months. Shit, this isn't going to happen. Six months, and I thought, right, I should stop spending like I'm still on telly. Yeah, because I was enough. doing that. Yeah, big point. Tax as well becomes D- an issue. The tax it? thing, I, I. I Completely. Lots of people fall into that. Oh trap. God, I was in you so just much trouble. It's going to carry on, yeah, you? because this is what's been in the rearview mirror. So that's what the road ahead yeah. is going to look like. I bought a, like a 20, 20 grand car, and we bought our first flat, and all this, and I was spending, and the savings were going down, and and then my accountant said, "By the way, you've got this this bill," and I went, "I ain't got it. Right. I ain't got it." And um, I, t- I was borrowing money off my mum. We had to get a lodger. We got a lodger really? in the flat. Me and my girlfriend Tessa at the time got got. Andy moved in with us. It's very, you know, because because I just totally misjudged it, sure. and it, it almost ended. And then LBC phoned up and said, um, "Clive Ball's off for two weeks." Yeah, I was a big fan of Clive Ball. Yeah, still am. love. Oh, Clive Ball is the best. He's the Don. It really is. I think he's the best radio presenter in this country I and he, he, possibly in the world by, by a country yeah, mile completely agree because he can do anything uh, uh, from doing a, an obituary of a member of the royal family to doing a breaking bomb skirt yeah. to, to making you laugh until a bit of wee comes uh, out when I was there and I was doing this surreal nonsense you know and Clive Ball was, was matching me with that yeah. nonsense every night he I would can. do a show thinking kind of thinking yeah. top that Clive and he would every night and you know and you listen I've been listening a lot recently to the Peter Cook calls oh, to him astonishing Sven and he the, gets the Sven and, and Clive all, 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 all easy to find on the internet they're all on YouTube yeah, yeah, yeah. And Clive keeps up with Peter Cook. Say no more. Keeps up with Unbelievable. him, man. Unbelievable. Um, so I got this gig filling for Clive Ball for two weeks. And I was like, yeah, I'll do is that, it. Is that, is that how the timing worked? Was that just within a year of, of, of Rise coming that to was, an That end? was in September. I didn't realise. And um, it was two weeks. And I got ill for the second week. So I couldn't do the second week. Mm. And it was like, oh, God, this is just such bad luck. Yes, yes. Um, and then... The, the the boss the, of, the, of of LBC then uh, before Christmas said actually we'd like to take you on and we think you've got something and I was like thank God for that yeah and that became you know the, the career part two was, uh, also was, the birth of gratitude perhaps yeah 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 that yeah. moment just when you said it there because I read I re- I know what that feels yeah like, and that is where you go Christ yes yeah because ten years previously you'd have thought LBC was beneath you um in I some sense. Thought- no, I would have done. I would have thought it was too mainstream. Yeah. Mainstream is this 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 word I've really struggled with all my life until now, yes. and I'm embracing it. But of I would course. have thought it was too mainstream. Um, I thought it was it was I th- thought it was beneath me. I thought yeah, it was, it was a, a confined crappy, to London. It was yeah, local. crappy it local radio national. station. You, you were a big star on yeah. national television, and yeah. and yet it's, when you actually confront the, the the possibility of a bleak future, you, yeah. you realise. There's a lot to be grateful for. Oh, God. Yeah, definitely. And I was grateful. And it was David Lloyd and Scott Solder. And you were very good at it. Well, no, thank you. It, it, I got good at it. I got good at it. The, 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 I would say I was there, I think, four years. The first eight... I mean, I, I replaced Brian Hayes. Mm. Got Brian Hayes the boot on, yes. from, from weekends, you know. And there's me going in. And they got me in because, you know, LBC now is a huge beast. It's this huge success story, and rightly so, because it's brilliant for the most part. Brilliant, <laughs> yeah. There we go. But um, but then it it was it was failing. You know, yes. I think it had just gone from medium wave to FM. Yes, a l- big expense, and no one was listening. And and David Lloyd got me in and said, "We need you. Our audience is old women that are dying. We need you to bring in a younger audience, and we will let you do what." Ever you want, which isn't a very, very rare, oh, isn't it? It was incredible, James. almost unprecedented. And I went in, I did, I went in and played the role of what I thought a phone in presenter was. So I would go in and go through the papers and come up with these stories and you know, mock outrage. And I'd write down these 20 points for this story of mock outrage. And gosh, isn't this outrageous? And we, we'd do this little show, and it was all right, mm. it was all right. And then about um, a year into it, Scott sold up. The program controller, whatever the phrase is, took me kind of out of me. He said, it's going, it's, it's going all right. But what I want you to do is I want you to do a show where you go in, maybe not a year into you go in and you don't don't even look at the newspapers and you talk about you. Mm. And I thought, oh, 
oh, that sounds rubbish. Yeah. I said, I don't want to do it. And he said, no, just, just do it once to see how it goes. You go in, no papers, just talk about you. Talk about your week, talk about your day, talk about stuff. I was like... All right, and it was the key. Oh, James, it was the key. Uh, it was, it was, it, I, it was the greatest gift anyone has ever given me because I went in and I did it. And the first show like that probably was a bit ropey, but again, it was that that thing just lifting. The, 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 I could see, yeah. I could see what the potential of what radio could be then, and that was the, the greatest gift. Just, just saying, forget the news, go in and talk about you. Mm. And, you know, over the next couple of years, I, I would kind of refine it and hone it, and I would go too far one way and too far one way, and I'd bring it back. And, um, you know, the LBC, uh, they let me do drive time on LBC. Imagine, imagine. And it was nonsense, you know. it would. I would go in and... I remember having a huge row with uh, Nana Rayburn once because I went in, I had to tease, <laughs> I had to tease the show because she was on before me. I loved yeah. Nana, but uh, she, you know, a legend. Of course, and, and a very serious woman. Very which serious is woman. Possibly why there may have been a. There was a tension. She called yeah. my show a kids' show, yeah. which I thought was great yeah. praise. And I, I had to go in and, and, and tease my show, and I said, right today, um, this is how long ago it was. I said, I'm gonna, I'm suggesting that we close all libraries. And we turn them into blockbuster videos because books are rubbish and film, films of, of books are always much better. And this explosion from Anna, just this explosion yes. of, 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 you know, quite <clears throat> rightful, of course, of you know, course, outrage. Just not quite getting... Not getting it. Yeah. How dare you, this wonderful literature. She did this big monologue and I just very calmly realised I was onto something. I went, yeah, but Anna, have you ever read A Good Car Chase? Get out of my studio! I never wanted, and it was great. And that was the nonsense I was doing. You know, yes. you look at LBC now, and it's a wonderful, you know, um, news-based station with some great people on there. You know, I shouldn't say this, but I listen to it a lot. Sure. Um, and um, no, but I, there's there's no room for that sort of irreverence. No, 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 nonsense. Of, uh, creative freedom, as it were. Nonsense. It's, it's, you no, know. and 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 I can't think of anyone else who embraced it more enthusiastically than you did. It was it was. Did you have heroes? Because you are actually a bit of a radio anorak, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a geek. So you must you you say that it was the keys to the kingdom, and I get yeah. that. It was it, I was there at the same time as you know. And yeah. For me, it was when um, some of the same people said, "Why don't you try and pretend that you're talking to one person instead of talking to yeah, a room oh, yeah. full of people?" And that's where everything fell into place for yeah. me. That's where suddenly it all made sense. Yeah. You know, because trying to address anybody out there want to say something that mm. doesn't there's no connection is the people have got the radio under their pillow they're listening oh, it's, bed, it's the most you. intimate isn't it it's the most intimate form of broadcasting but who were your heroes then? who were you thinking of when you was uh, there anyone or? there was Peter Cook yes um, again because I was aware of the Sven from Swiss Cottage mm. and also just that, that rambling monologue kind of answers Terry Wogan surprisingly uh, enough no, you, not talk, surprising. you talk about that that talking to one person Actually, I got that from don. him he was the Don Okay, oh, he, he did that thing of dear yeah. listener a yeah. phrase that I've I've completely stolen that dear listener Listener. You do the hello you, which is exactly yeah. the, uh, what, what what we're talking about. Yeah. Hello you, not yeah. hello everybody. Yeah, and it was it's a him, um, Tommy Boyd. I, yes. I'm a big fan of, and it, in terms of comedy, around that time I was really getting into Andy Kaufman. Yes, you know who, which is where the slight. I, I, I don't really kind of do it now, but that thing of, of the, the the slightly contentious. Let's close libraries and turn them yes. into things. Obviously, it's nonsense, right? But I knew that th that audience that we mentioned, the older kind of audience, would be outraged. And, yes, and they would course. phone up and it would be funny. And I kind of got that sort of thing from, from Tommy Boyd and from Andy Kaufman. You know, that, that kind of going on with a smile and saying something. Not, not being a shock jock, because I think being a shock jock, A, I don't really know what that means. And I think it's... It's less imaginative. Oh, it's a it's... much more. I mean, you're describing a contrivance, but you're not describing yeah. a cynical contrivance. Yeah, you're not, and also you're not trying to. You want to. You want to create laughs. You don't want to create fury. You yeah. want to diffuse the fury with the humour. It, it was play, a playfulness exactly. that I, that I introduced that. Yes. to it. I think the um uh, that came to an end. The management changes. Uh, yeah. the, the the decision was. I, I don't have to be diplomatic about this. Is it, you were never going to be comfortable. Being, it, it, being on a, on an unleavened diet of news-based chat. A new boss came in and didn't like the show and wanted it to be newsy yeah. and, um, you know, would phone up during the show saying, um, tell him to stop doing this. And I just thought, oh, this is not sure. particularly good. So I, so I left, yeah. But again, that's quite... 
it's quite a bold move. It's a very different departure from the 11 o'clock show departure. It wasn't that bold. I can say this now in, with years past because our boss, David Lloyd, had moved to Virgin That's and right. I went and had a sneaky meeting saying, look, if I left, could you, is there any chance you could give me a gig? He said, I'm so glad you came to me because I'm not allowed to approach you. But yes, of course. But you're allowed to approach I him. I was allowed to approach him. So that's Good. that's kind of how that worked. And then I went to Virgin, which then became Absolute. For yes. about four, it, I seem to be in places for about three and a half, four years. That seems to be... In, in radio, mm. the sort of length of time that I stay before... Which is odd, because I'm increasingly persuaded that you need a really long stretch to properly bed down. Yeah, there's, there's, a, quite, there's quite often a change... You bring some people with you, but you're never going to yeah. bring everybody with you. There's quite often a change in management. That, That's true. That you know, signals these w- things. When I was at Virgin Became Absolute <laughs> and Clive Dickens, who I, get on, you know, I got on really well with, um, but the first meeting was he said, Ian, I don't get your show. Can you explain it to me? I thought, oh, God. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, he let me stay there for a couple of years under him. And when he <laughs> let me go, I shook you. This is this was the, the place I was at. When he let me go, I was heartbroken. Yeah. Really heartbroken. I mean, devastated because I loved that show. But I shook his hand and said, thank you very much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And I, and I, and I, I walked out. And that was the difference. You know, I left LBC in a huff and mm. two fingers up and mm. how dare you tell me what to do. And then three and a half, four years later, it was a, thanks very much for letting me play in your house. I really appreciate the time that I've had here. You know, yes. and it was, it, it, that, that gratitude kind Both of Both honest grew. reactions though, that's the point, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you oh, definitely. But again, after uh, uh, Absolute, there was yeah. another wilderness. A hiatus. There was, there was nothing. How long? That, four. Um... It was. Um, I seem to remember leaving in sort of November and getting a job. I was. It was about eight, nine, ten months. We might get, it's a frightening period of yeah. time. It's the one where you begin to wonder whether the light at the end of the yeah. tunnel might go out. I thought that was it, Did but I'd, I'd, I'd learned from the previous thing and I'd saved, yeah. just saved loads of money, so I could afford. I, I could afford a year, a year and a half right. not working, you know, because I just saved. And I went to everyone. I went to um, talk sport. I went to um, I went to every How radio did that station. Feel? That, that, that must be tough. No, uh, not really. No, not really. It was, you know, I guess it, I don't want to say humbling. It wasn't humiliating. It was, but every rejection, I kind of thought, oh, oh god, this is this is yeah. bad. Yeah. I remember going to a meeting at Heart. And the guy turned up late and he said, um, sorry, I'm left. I've just been talking to the, the jocks and um, I'm really pleased because we've got the, the the talking between the records down from 27 seconds to 23 seconds. I could be in the wrong place. I yeah. Couldn't. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, God. Um, I, I, it was, but it was a depressing 10 months mm. of thinking... Well, maybe that, maybe that is it. And that isn't self-deprecation. That isn't... That, no, I you get know, that. Because some people... Their career does end, yes. you know, and I'd been doing it for, I, I don't know, I guess 12 years. That's kind of a long hmm. time. And some people, they do just kind of fizzle out or, you know, it's that thing of, God, do you remember such and such? I wonder where they are now. And you Google them and they're working as an estate agent yeah. or, y- you know, whatever, because it's just... Producing pantomimes, could be anything, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's, it's a... just not continued sure. for them. So I thought that is what had happened and then to me. Then I went, um, a friend of mine said, oh... B- the BBC local radio station, BBC Three Counties, they they they've got some cover shifts. I'm doing some cover shifts. You should do it. And that I did think was beneath me. Yes, okay. I, I really did think BBC local radio. So did I, if I'm honest. Yeah. Well, th- well for me. Yeah. Oh well, thank you. Um, I I did. But, but with a fat strain of there, but for the grace of God. Actually, yeah. Because you've got bills to pay. I, I yeah, did, yeah. But I did think, oh, Christ, if that happens to him. Yeah. You know. It was. It would. But, but, um, I kind of learned to love it of in course. the end. I well, learned you made to it love yours. it. Yeah, and I went and I had this meeting with this lovely um, boss, uh, Laura, and um, she was talking to me. And I was there for like two weeks, cover shift. Shift. I was thinking we fill in for someone, and she was talking to me. And, and at the end of it, I, I came out and I phoned up my wife, and she said, "How'd it go?" I said, "I think she's just offered me breakfast." I love those meetings. Yeah, because I, I didn't really, I couldn't really <laughs> no, follow it. Of course. And, and, and she had, she basically said, look, we're trying out several people for breakfast, but right. I already know I want you to do it. And, I, and it was a real thing of, um, I had to take it because I, I had two kids yeah, and a yeah, mortgage. Yeah. Did I have two kids? I think I had two kids and a mortgage. One kid, one on the sure. way. And... Um, but I did. I, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed, really? and I, I was. I felt embarrassed at, you know, what I perceived to be yet another humiliation 
in my career, after getting over the Ricky Gervais and Sasha's kind of thing, mm. this was like another humiliation going, d d doing this. And I ended up loving it. I ended up realizing that local radio is actually really important. And, and, and you it, won awards and, and you won you awards. Had a phenomenally successful show. Uh, it, it was. And Redefined the, the genre, just to be well, sort of pretentious for a moment. <laughs> but I, I, I the, and the, again, the first year there was me doing a straight yeah, yeah. local radio breakfast show, talking about school closures, talking about potholes in Milton Keynes, all of this stuff, and kind of dying inside. And then I went through a couple of producers and there was a newsreader called Catherine and I, I liked her because she had exactly the same sense of humour as me. And when my first producer left to have a baby, I said to Catherine, I want you to produce me. She said, I don't want to do it. Because she'd been battered around within the BBC yes, system. Of course, yes. She'd been kind of been treated really badly. She said, sure. I don't want to do it. I'm not interested. Thanks very much. I was like, OK, but I really want you to do it. Then I had another producer who left. And I said, Catherine, you're, you're, you're going to produce me. And I kind of bullied her into it. And once I had her as a producer, the, shack the, the shackles were off. And it, we just spent the three hours each day making each other laugh. Oh, and you know what it's like when you work yeah, with someone like, who's someone who's now is a really good, one of my best friends. Yes. And we just made each other laugh. And some of the stories, we get these stories about, you know, Oh, well, this I kept doing this story about the parking in Milton Keynes going up by 20 pence an hour. It was like, suppose everyone was supposed to be outraged. And I was thinking, you try parking in London for less than 25 quid <laughs> an hour and you'll be... And when Catherine, I'd, say, I'd go to her, I'd go, I don't think this story is very good. She goes, rubbish, isn't it? Should we not do it? <laughs> I was like, can we do that? She went, yeah, we'll drop it. Brilliant. Brilliant. And so, 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 so back to the LBC style freedom, yes. but, but with... The, the lens of news, if you like. With the I mean, lens of news. The lens of looking at it all through the lens. I of get the feeling. I always look at those, the last two and a half years there as I was doing two separate shows at the same yes. time. I, and they were on different frequencies, yes. okay? And so the, the, the older listener, older, I guess in age, but also who'd been listening to that for mm -hmm. a long time, would still hear a local radio show yes. about local issues. But then the kind of more attuned listener would also hear would, would would hear this kind of surreal nonsense, slightly mocking the genre yeah. kind of kind of thing. You know, they would hear my tongue firmly flapping around inside my cheek. Yes, yes, and it wasn't yes. disrespectful to the sh to the show. It wasn't disrespectful to the listeners that have been there for a long time. But it was funny and it was clever and it was dumb in places. And y it was surreal. And we, you know, we would play all obscure kinds of music and get ridiculous guests in and it was wonderful and then they broke my heart by stitching me up and hanging well, me out to try and, and if you had asked me <laughs> six months before you because it came to an end in 2015 and if they'd said to me if someone had said to me at work oh ian's just lost his gig at three counties and i'd had to guess why yeah <laughs> this would have come about <laughs> About 157,000 from my list. We have a mutual wife. friend, Scott, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Scott Balcony. And he said to me, of all the things you did on that show, you could have got the sack for. That was not one of <laughs> them. That shouldn't have been one of them. I, I did a double take when I read yeah. it. I, I, I presume there was sort of politics at play. There's loads or, of politics going of in, in play. It was basically what, what I, I you know, not really, stuff I can't say about it. But what of I can so. say is yes. that um, uh, we had, there's this story about this guy, this, this, this um, uh, extreme I'm trying to f use the, f the right language because it got turned into an anti-Christian thing, which it wasn't at no, all. It wasn't anti-Christian. I really made that clear during yes. the thing. This, 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 this Christian with very extreme beliefs, um, anti-abortion and that being gay was, was a sin. And, mm. blah, blah, and, and he had been working as a gardener in a prison, such a convoluted story, for sex offenders. And he'd been preaching while he was gardening but basically preaching that being gay was a sin and mm. they should repent and obviously there were some gay people in there and they complained and he got the sack so he then hooked up with this this group christian concern who uh, were, were suing this this prison and it was going to to you know tri tribunal and stuff so we had him on and we had a lawyer on we also had for balance we had a lesbian vicar on and we had a male heterosexual vicar who also came on and said look as far as i'm aware there's nothing in the bible that says being gay is bad you know mm. this is this is this is a an interpretation that i personally believe is wrong and yes. so do a lot of christians and the the, the the woman from christian concern was i just got really pissed off with her yes. really angry and really offended with her 
Um, I don't hate gays, Ian. I love them. That's why I want them to repent and, yeah, yeah. and go and to heaven and not be gay anymore. Yeah. And I got really angry and I lost my temper. And, I, and that was the only thing I think I did wrong was I did lose my temper and I shouted. Right. I said, you're a bigot and this is bigotry and you're preaching bigotry. And we might have young people, we might have old people, we might have Christians on who are confused about what they are. And I find it, I've got to say, you know, I kept saying for my gay brothers and sisters, I've got to say, th this is you are yeah. you're bigots. You this, know, isn't this, this, this isn't is, balance. This isn't balance. No. This isn't what God. God, God is problem. love. God and is love. And there's the problem because and you're quite an outlier for this. You're like yeah. a canary down the coal mine because yeah. I think that the BBC's got all sorts of problems with balance and impartiality, yeah. particularly with regard to Brexit and Trump mm. and climate change. But yeah. what what you fell foul of was. A moral absolute, the, yeah. the, 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 the moral absolute belief that being gay is not a lifestyle yes. choice. Yes, and, and they... And, and the BBC does still encourage, oh, well, here's someone who will tell us why... Yeah. If, you know, here's Galileo Galilei explaining um, the astronomy that he's just done, and here's a fellow from the Vatican to yeah. tell us why the Earth still revolves. They still do that, and it's it's a really strange thing. And me and Catherine came out, all, you know, virtually high-fiving, going, that was a great, it's great show. radio. That was a great show. Yeah. And then that afternoon I got a phone call saying... Um, there is a problem. Yes. Uh, I hate the, those phone calls. The, the, and, I, and it was my heart sank. I was stood yeah. outside Tottenham Court Road Station. As soon as I got that phone call, yeah. this was on a Thursday, I thought, this this game's over. Did you really? Yeah, I thought, I, I know. Just through pessimism or you just knew how the I, cards were going to I just knew how fall. it was going to end. Right. I, just, I could just tell. I thought, I've been here before. Yeah. Um, oh, and um, it was, that, that basically, this, that they'd started this campaign. And that, but I was told, if you go on air and apologise, um, this will go away. Mm. And they, they, the BBC wrote me my apology. And I said, I'm not saying that because that retracts everything I've said about, you know, I, I, so we, we, we together fashioned an apology that was vague. Yes. You know, apology that, that apologized if anyone was offended. Of that course. Kind of nonsense, which means meaningless. <laughs> so we did that. And then it just, it just, wouldn't quite go away. And these people started shouting late and, and they turned it into an anti Christian. <laughs> thing yeah. you would never speak like that to a muslim well actually i have spoken yeah, like that to a muslim who, who did this um uh, you're you're anti-christian i said well no i'm not i'm not a christian but i'm not anti there, i tell you what there was one thing actually there was one thing i said that was wrong and as soon as i said it i apologized because it was wrong and they kept honing on this and then ignoring the bit after us uh. where i said i immediately retract that i said oh, what was it it was something like um oh this is typical of you christians got you yes okay and as soon as i said it I went, I shouldn't have said that. And yeah, I retract yeah, that yeah. immediately. Uh, uh, but that was... That it was... feels like a game of cat and mouse with these people. Yeah. Quite. Not not these people specifically, but some What people, do you mean, these people, you mean these James? people? But you know exactly what I mean. Yeah. The, the, the idea that it's not actually about the end. Yeah. It's about the means. It's about the scrap. It's about getting you to lose your temper. Yeah. I think of John Sweeney in that famous Scientology oh, yeah, interview yeah. where I, they're just a sense that they want you to lose your temper. I, and that's why you feel you've lost when you do. I think so. But but I shouldn't have lost my no, temper. Absolutely I shouldn't, shouldn't have done that. No, I shouldn't have course. said that one thing no. I said, but I retracted it immediately. But, but shouldn't that doesn't have said matter, it. does it? Because it's out there. Yeah, um, it should matter. It, yeah, and um, it ended up with stuff that I will tell you off mic and off yes, camera. Of but th yeah, the next it went on for another week. I kind of puttered on, and then I remember I had my youngest in the car with me, who would have been two, mm. two and a half. And I got a phone call from my agent. I pulled over and I saw it. I thought this, and he said, "Sick in the tummy, feeling." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That 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 blackness and he said um and it's more, slightly more complicated than this but the sure, option was yeah. you've got you, you're not allowed back anymore and i just burst into tears oh, my mate. kid in the back of the car because i was devastated because i love i was so proud james yeah. to work for the bbc yeah, I get that. so proud and you've done stuff for that and yeah. I, I had a bbc fob and my yeah. dad used to work bbc years ago as a props man but it, it felt like a kind of continuation of him. I was just so proud. Just say, what do you do? I work for BBC. And I'd put that whole nonsense about, you know, feeling ashamed about local radio. I'd got rid of that yeah. quite a couple of years before, you know, and realised that we could do something creative and different. And I just felt so betrayed and so let down and so... It was devastating. I had a breakdown, a mental breakdown. Did you? A proper, you know, the... the I had a proper breakdown, you know, and became a shuffling figure and that couldn't get out of bed and would, would you know... So this would be clinical depression. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, I you know, I, I've talked a lot about having depression and stuff and it's always kind of there. But this was a proper breakdown um, in tears, couldn't move for weeks in because bed. Because you'd moved so far. Yeah. And because and, and, that phrase we used when we were talking about the 11 o'clock show, we said, it's just not fair. Yeah. 
and actually looking back, the eleven o'clock show stuff was neither fair nor unfair. No. It was just it was just a tough break. Yeah. But th- this was horribly this unfair. This felt unfair. Well, what is the point of me trying to be yeah. this person to get over my sense it was of to do, and then they come and hobble me? It was so confusing. It's like being It was awful to watch. Being in love you're in you're the greatest love affair and then one day you get a phone call saying, I don't want to see you anymore. Yes. Why not? Not, not don't have you. to explain yeah, to you. I don't it. have to tell you. And it was it was it was so confusing and it was devastating. And it, it, it was also weird because then it did turn into like a big thing on Twitter. Yes. With big names kind of tweeting it. And I was just thinking, oh, please everyone, just go away. Go away. Stop looking at me. I don't want anything. And I wasn't allowed to talk about it. And of people, not. you know, took that silence. I don't know what they took that silence as, but um That it, was tough. That was horrible, man. That it was, was really, horrible. really tough. So horrible. You, but you came back. Yeah. After how long? Um, Another th- nine months? No, it wasn't that long. It was six months. And you you marched into talk radio. So I went to talk you radio. Need and you need me. I, well, I, here's the thing. I, I, I'd had that conversation before I left the BBC. I'd, I'd gone into talk radio. Yes, so the talk said. radio gig was pretty much there anyway right. before I left. Yes. So the, the 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 leaving was devastating. It was the betrayal that was devastating. But actually, I knew that six months later there was another job. Okay, okay. there was yeah. a job that was lined up. So oh, okay. So, so it was it was more of an, a sort of existential angst. Yeah, than a, yeah, than yeah. A professional. It, it was one. it was a, it was the betrayal. Yes. It was the bre- breakup of a relationship. It was the humiliation. I felt humiliated. Did you? I really felt even hum- with all these people queuing up to yeah. say you've been abominably treated. Yeah, you, you still felt I felt humiliated. Yeah, felt, or, or awful. You know absolutely was the lowest ebb I've ever been in and, right. and to the point where I lost my confidence yeah which is everything which is the th- which is the real thing I lost my confidence I totally lost my nerve and so the start of the talk radio show was was very shaky because I, I I just totally lost my bottle I didn't know I don't, I don't, I don't like talking about this do you not? No. Why? I don't know. I just, it's just it's so nebulous, isn't it? It's, but, you never know when. No. Because it's such a stupid thing to do for a living. Yeah, <laughs> to, to, but it the is. light comes on. Right, be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is when you start thinking about it. It's be. like thinking about breathing. Yes, exactly You know, that. you start thinking about it. You go, hang on. Well, How does I'll that go work? To, I'm going to forget. <laughs> uh, and I did. I got that self I was completely self-aware and Gosh. aware of everything I was saying and being really careful. Yes. Yes, it yes, yeah, because you don't impressed. want to fall into another. I don't want to get caught out again. Incomprehensible bear trap. That yeah, we got butchered by last. Time. Yeah, but it's all going very well. Oh, it's great! I'm having the best time of my life. Doing the best shows I've ever done. It's a thrill. And um, this new dimension has suddenly appeared out of the blue. This, this new <laughs> where, where where our conversation began. This sort of new new levels of. Oh, you know what? What people listening, yeah. people watching this are going to think. They're, they're going to be thinking, "How's he going to fuck this one up?" This is what I, well, this is the thing. This is what I'm thinking, right? Because I've done now. I've done the jungle, and twelve year olds come up to me in the street and say, "Can I have a selfie?" and all of that. And um, I went on Loose Women. Yeah. I, you know, I was on Loose Women over Christmas, and I had to come down a slide to come through a chimney <laughs> and be interviewed about eating strawberries. Yeah. And then at the end of it, I had to pour a bucket of cream over Joey Essex. Yeah. And I'm doing it, thinking, "What the fuck? How has this happened?" <laughs> and this this week and next week. Um, I'm replacing Richard Arnold. I'm, yes. um, I've, I've got to stop saying TVAM. No, it's just good, good morning, morning Britain. Britain. Or GMB. GMB, yeah. 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 Hashtag GMB. Uh, you know, doing the showbiz reporting. And it's wonderful and I'm loving it. Oh, good. And it's it, th- this mainstream thing. You know, I'm embracing the mainstream yeah. that five, ten years ago, I go, oh, bloody hell, I don't want to do because that. Because you felt that popular, popular was yes. somehow less authentic. Um, yeah, it was authenticity. And I would take everyone's judgment of me really personally and it's it's it's, it's kind of worse now with twitter mm. with i worry about you sometimes on twitter i want to i want to grab you by the Tom, ears and mate. say don't don't care because i I've, my, I've got a hide like a rhinoceros but i didn't always have it yeah because you don't yet i do now do you, are you i think there? i do now good and that was that was being in the jungle and yes there was, it, i was gonna know. say it's a recent development yeah 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 it, it, it is and I, I i it was it was Great, and I would get before that. I would get involved with people going, "Hey, your show shit." Yeah, I know. You and I'd would. go, and we'd argue and we'd discuss yeah, and I'd be it. Like, shut up, Ian! Shut up! Leave yeah. him alone! Leave him alone! <laughs> yeah, um, but now block him. <laughs> I, there's this thing called a block button yes, on there, James. Yes, yes. Why didn't no one tell me about that? And so, uh, people today say, "I don't want to see this idiot on Good Morning Britain." Where's <laughs> when's gone? Yeah, gone. absolutely. You know, absolutely. and it's wonderful, and it, it's it sounds like such a simple thing. But it's, it's not, it, it isn't. It because, really is. Because you have that niggling thing inside you thinking they've got one over on you. Yeah. Or they go, you just yeah, screw gone. them. Yeah, I mean, nothing Forget for me them. now. I mean, it doesn't nothing. matter. So it's, 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 you know, the jungle 
was horrendous and wonderful and awful and the best thing I've ever done in my life. You know, how, all of these things. How conscious are you in it of what is, because now you've seen stuff yeah. out of it. Um, you'll forgive me, I didn't watch it all. No, I, I, I wouldn't expect you to. I did no, both you know. of you, though. Thought, did several, you? Several times. Did you really? Yes, I really oh, you did. silly sausage. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, the James. kids. Oh, great. And, um, good for them. And, 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 and you, you clearly went on a bit of a crash course afterwards about the difference between what you thought was going on and what was yeah. really going on. How big a gulf is it? And how Massive. How is it, really? Massive. I, I, you, you know nothing about what's going on. Right. You, you are kept completely in the dark. There are so many mind games. You're not allowed to watch in there. My and God. You, when, when you, you only see crew when you go out to do a trial or a challenge. Right. Right. And they've all got their watches. They've got tape over their watches. So really? you can't. So you're constantly trying to find the time. Here's the thing. What they do as well, you, you, in the camp, no one comes into the camp. Very rarely someone would come into the camp to set up a prop, but they won't talk to you and they won't look at you. And you kind of have to, you, you, sometimes you go, how's it going? You all right? Hello? I, I, you know, but nor often like, you just ignore them. Sure. But when you go out, you go off to do the trials and you wanted to do a trial because it was so boring in there. Yeah. No books, no pens, no paper, nothing. Boring, just these same conversations about what. Five times I had the conversation. What what team do you support? I don't support team. Are you not into football? No. What's your sport then? I don't have a sport. And five times I had that conversation yeah. with the same person. So you'd go out, <laughs> and then to get you to the trials, they would put you in the back of a blacked out van. So right. You couldn't see anything. Oh, really? They'd drive yeah. you around. Then when you got to where it was, you would come out and they would put a towel over it's your head. It's very Guantanamo Bay. Oh, mate, it's insane. Yeah. You, and if there was a group of you, they would put towels over your head and you had to look at the floor, put your hand on the front of the, uh, on the shoulder of the security guard who would then walk you to the thing. So it was all mind games. And we had no idea what was going on outside. You got no idea at all. And there's a couple of times I nearly walked because I hated it. You know, I found Which it's, bits did you hate? The loneliness? Uh, the loneliness and um, well, you, and you were conscious people weren't being very nice to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or not nice, yeah, it was nice about you. More I was being than nice ostracized. I was, I was conscious that I was being ostracized and was being excluded, yes. and that was it was you, horrendous. What do you do then? Do you try and work out why, or do you? Oh, I knew quietly. Despair? I knew why. Why? It's because of that silly strawberry. Because because I stole strawberries, and, and it was misrepresented by a man. It was misrepresented, so I didn't know. Why didn't you just tell them? Well, I, I did, but eventually they didn't believe did. me. Well, eventually you did, but you didn't tell them straight away. Well, the Amir was... Yeah. Well, here's the thing, because I told well, them... So when you did it, yeah. I can't believe I'm interested in this. Go on, but when I you, know. When you did it, yeah. you didn't really want to do it. Were you trying to no. be his mate? No, i tell you what it was, right? Go on. This, this was the only part of the thing where I had a game plan, <laughs> right? Uh, we talk, we, we, the, strawberries, the strawberries was Amir's idea, yeah. right? But as he said it, I thought, hmm, wouldn't that be a wonderful bit of television. It was Andy Kaufman. Speaking. It was the Kaufman. Yeah. It was, when I came out, my, when my sister came into the jungle, my sister said, the strawberries, that was you wrestling women, wasn't yeah, it? Which yeah, is a huge yeah, Andy yeah. Kaufman thing. He would yeah. go and wrestle women. She said, that, that was you wrestling wow. women. I said, you got it. Yeah. You got it totally. Well, I didn't get it at the time. No, and I was, and I, and I, what you didn't see was we had a 40 minute back and forth conversation of us going, we could, and I'd go, oh no, I can't. And he'd go, good, I was just testing you, but we could. And what I was doing in that 40 minutes was thinking, right, would the people closest to me, Scott and Kath and, and my family, would they find it funny? Yes, they would find oh, it funny. Yes. So there's that. At some point, I'm gonna have to confess to this. Can I go through the fallout of confessing to it? Yes, I think I can go through that. Would that look great on TV? And I knew, yeah, yeah. right, this yeah. was the only bit I calculated. I knew it would, be, have, it would be incredible television, the betrayal and then the confession. I also knew that if I could get Amir to, to confess while he was dressed as a cat, for those who've never seen the show, they're going, what is this? <laughs> if I could get him to get dressed as a cat, that would be an iconic yeah, moment in, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. in a very silly reality And, and also TV having show. been a presenter on the Big Brother show, yeah. you, you have an understanding of... I knew what would the catch the imagination, the, yeah. The, the. And I knew that that could be amazing. No one put us up to it. People said, oh, you were told to do that. No one told us to do it. There was a film crew there with us. And once that conversation started, you could see them salivating yeah, at the of thought course. of it. Um, and, and then <laughs> the, the, sod. the 40 minutes was then me building up the confidence. Right. I knew it was going to be absolutely shit afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And the one thing I didn't bank on, right, the one thing I didn't bank on was them not believing that Amir was anything to do with it, was yeah. them thinking it was me. Because uh, he told them that, essentially. Well, he he initially told them it was him as, as well. And I, after that, Dennis came up, Dennis Wise, the footballer, came up to me and said... <laughs> such a surreal... <laughs> <story."> 
<laughs> he took me to one side. He said, Ian, Amir's just told me it was 50-50, but I know it was all you. you. That was a really stupid idea in front of 12 million people. And he said to me, in front of 12 million people, that's going to look bad. And I'm thinking, first of all, I was thinking, fucking hell, that's amazing that that has happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead, I'm thinking, in front of 12 million people, it's going to look funny. Yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah. look something. Yes, you know. Um, so I, 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 but that's why they, they, they took it out on me is because they didn't believe Amir then up behind my back was saying that was nothing to do and with then me, they started know. getting voted out one by uh, did yeah. you think we were going to go first I got immunity first of all yes, you, of course you did and so oh, I did tell you I hadn't watched all of it yeah I know don't worry I got <laughs> immunity and Shappy Shappy Corsani yeah, was, was in there yeah was lovely but I just love probably Shappy. didn't have the recognition before yeah. she went in to carry her so she got voted out and I thought well that's because I've got immunity it'll be me or Kez yeah. Kezia Dugdale um, the, the Scottish politician <laughs> who I'm now really good friends with it'll be, it'll be us next because people that go in later I went yeah. in a week after everyone else people that go in later never do very well Play catch up. so Kezia got knocked out second I thought right well I'm, I'm, I'm next okay, and I was all set for it I was ready for it and um, Rebecca Vardy got booted out who'd been quite unpleasant to she'd you. been quite unpleasant mm. yeah and so there's a degree of her is there, there was um, I, no. Tell you what, it was shock because okay. I had her down as one of the final five yeah. in my head. I'd worked out who was going to be what, and I had Toff. I had Toff down as the winner, but um, she got booted out. I thought, anyway. right, that's a statistical anomaly. Yes. Right? Okay, an outlier. I'm, yeah, an outlier. I'm going to be next. And when I wasn't fourth, when it was Vanessa from the Saturdays, I suddenly thought, right, something is happening outside that I am unaware of. Something has shifted. And I thought then I thought I can make I think I can make it to the final five because I, I, I started to get an idea of what the the story was that was being being shown. I didn't realise it was all me, yeah. you know, sat in the in the the Bush Telegraph crying and me lots of shots of me sat on my own like that. <laughs> like and, one, and one flew over the cuckoo's Oh, nest, wasn't was it, man? <laughs> um, uh, uh, but it was it. Yeah, I mean, and then I started doing the maths and thinking I. I think I can get to the final three. This is insane. Yeah. This is insane. Great, though. Were you excited? Or, or, I started you... to get excited yeah, then. Good. Once Vanessa went and I and I I did the maths, I started to think, oh, mm. this could be this could be um fun. You know. Oh, the reasons I did it, James, let me I want to say real quickly, there, I, there were three reasons. One is because they do wave a very fat check in front of you and it's really handy at the moment. Good. The second one is because, you know, I do this show on talk radio and it's only on DAB yeah. and, you know, the, the listening figures aren't great. Sure. And I wanted people, I wanted to say to 12 million people, I've got a radio show. Yeah. And it worked and we're getting loads of new callers, loads Brilliant. of new listeners. But the third reason was, and you'll get this, my kids who are six and eight nearly, they, they've never seen me really on TV. They didn't really watch the Big Brother stuff because it was sure. a bit rude. Yeah. And they certainly never saw the 11 o'clock show or any of that stuff. They've never seen me on TV. And so I wanted to show them me in a really big, slick, you know, light entertainment show, dressed up like a Wally, doing stupid things. And it and that worked. They, asked, they couldn't they, be more it, proud right? of me. Oh, Mate, on. they love it. They, when I came home, they'd made a video all on their own. Their mum was in the kitchen. They made a video. The youngest got swimming goggles on, crawling under a table. My eldest is Ant and Deck with an American accent, <laughs> doing a, doing this. And it, they are so proud of me. Oh, and they, they think it's so funny. So mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, man. Happy it, days. it paid off. It and, paid and, off. And whatever happens, happens. Yeah, I'm enjoying, you know, I'm enjoying... The silliness of it, because it's yeah. silly. It's silly getting recognised in the street by kids. It's silly having 15-year-old girls. It was always silly. It's just taking you 20 years to realise it. Yeah. I should finish that sentence, because I've left like, it yes, hanging on. Was, it was silly having 15-year-old girls phoning up my show. Sorry, because it that would end You're awfully. Right. This, this is a new... This is, this phoning is a up, you know, the radio show that is, you know, speech radio is is wrongly, but but is, is predominantly dominated by, you know, men of a certain type phoning up, you yes, know. Yes, yes. And now I've got 15-year-old girls phoning up, taking part... In my nonsense, and it's it's wonderful, and it's silly, and you know I'm getting some really nice job offers, and I'm I'm taking them all. Brilliant. I'm 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 cashing the checks. I'm having a wonderful time, and I'm also aware that that will probably that will possibly yes. stop at some point. And and the the radio is my career, and everything else on top is uh, the phrase I believe the kids are using. It's all gravy. It's all. Gravy. It's all gravy. Was there I, probably the final question? Okay, go on. Is there a little bit of you still? Yeah. That is there about to eat a lizard's testicle pig's vagina a pig's vagina that's thinking why why am i not doing what anton decker doing 
Oh, do you know what? That's a brilliant, brilliant question. No, it's not because Ant and Deck are magical. Oh, I know that. I know that. No, I know what you're saying. But no, no. uh, That particular thing when you walk out and you eat, it was like being Mike TV and Willy Wonka where you get sucked into the TV. You walk out and suddenly you're on that really big show where you get to eat rubbish That's so weird isn't it where something's so iconic yeah that it feels could, like you've stuck i couldn't into... stop giggling yeah. i could because i was thinking this is this is where paul burrell yeah, was yeah, this yeah, is yeah. this is famous i just kept giggling and i felt no actually i i sat there thinking and, and for most of it thinking I'm, I'm in the i'm in the right place this is the right place for me is doing this and i'm very happy that i'm doing this uh, you know, m- m- my mental health was was kind of a- a- at a very strong place, which is why I, I said I'd do it. Yes. And um, I'd-, I'd made peace with the fact that there would be some press in truth. I made peace with all of it. And I was sat there, that particular one, sat there as they lift up the thing and go, here's a, co- a cocktail made of cockroaches and worms and you're going to drink you it. You were nailing those. You had no problem with the drinks. The drinks were great. You just the had to drinks, chug it down. Yeah, you just imagine just, it's a that smoothie. That was in your head though. That was like your chump, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I can do this. I can right? do this. <laughs> um, and it was, although the, the camel's brains was the no, one and even now it still repeats. On <laughs> but honestly, that was absolutely awful, the camel's brains. But, um, I was sat there thinking, this is great. This is fun. This is silly. I got the ridiculousness of it. I was having such a great time flirting with Ant and Deck and making yes. every time I made them laugh, it yeah, made me yeah, feel yeah. good. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They seemed to, I, I loved it. I loved it. You know, mainly, I mean, some of it was horrendous, but I'm, I'm, I'm so glad I did it. I'm so good. glad I did it. I'm so not watched I. it. I won't watch it. Really not? Why no, would you? Why would you? I've watched the trials. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm really proud of, you know, jumping a hundred feet off. That, off was, the, that was tough. That was horrible, man. That was tough. They lied to me. I said, how far will I fall? You won't yeah. fall. Okay. And it was I was attached to a bungee rope. Of course first. you're going to fall. Uh, for a, for, but for you a, did it. For a you second. nearly didn't do it. Nearly didn't do it. <laughs> There was a millisecond though as I fell, I thought, oh Christ, this has gone wrong, I'm dying. And then I bounced back up and went, oh, you wankers. <laughs> I did, I thought I was going to die. I thought, <laughs> you know, because I thought this has gone horrendously wrong. And they can do whatever you want. The waivers you've signed yeah, exactly. pretty much given them your you, soul you've, for, you've, the, you've, for the duration. You've signed everything away. But before you went in, I, yes. I tweeted, because I was surprised. Yeah. And, and I said, I uh, you know, my uh, best of luck to him, good friend. I, um, I hope he knows what he's doing, but, yeah. he's, but he's often at his brilliant best when he doesn't. Yeah. You did know what you were doing. Um, it was the experience was more was more uncomfortable than I expected, and the 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 the, the after effect was bigger than I expected. Yes. But yeah, but apart from those two things, it was it, I'd really really thought about it, and I'd spoken to people, the few people I'm, you know, you're not allowed to tell anyone. No, of course. And um, I'd had really frank conversations with all the pros and the cons. The plan was go in last, come out first, have yeah. a nice holiday, yeah, cash, cash the, the check. check. Um, but you know, it, it worked. It paid off. You know, much better than I ever could have done. And yeah. and it was, you know, it's was, it was really dumb, silly, wonderful, prime time show. You yes. know, I was in twelve million homes, and lovely people come up to me and say, "I'm really." I tell you what's nice. Here we go. This is a nice thing. Is um, I get men coming up to me saying and emailing me and tweeting me, but but they come up to me. These nervous men sidle up to me in Nando's the other night. <laughs> so I just want to say what you said about mental health and what you said about feeling anxious in groups of people that's me yeah and i had a guy the other day who said i've never told my wife that i'm depressed and we've just sat down and had the most oh, honest man. conversation we've ever had about that because of you now right it, I, I, no, I don't do it no, no i'm no. gonna do it a little bit because it's not it's not entirely because of me but if if i have been the spark yes that has that has you know that has helped that conversation start then I'm I'm very proud of that, and that's wonderful, and that's brilliant, and the fact that you know you had a depressed, socially anxious bloke on primetime TV talking about medication and talking about meditation and talking about feeling excluded and awkward in groups of people, on you know the biggest show on TV, that's that shows how far we've come in terms well, of does, mental health, and, and also it? that millions of people felt a connection yeah. with you because you represented them in a way that they'd never felt represented yeah. on that kind of program before. Even though lots of people on those programs yeah. would, have, would have been where you are and where you were, yeah. but they wouldn't have said so. They yeah. wouldn't have talked it through. Yeah. I think you played a blinder. Thank you, mate. Seriously, and it's so so good to see you on such top form. Thank you, and it's it's, it's you know like, it, it thing you know some some things in life are rubbish at the moment, but sure. but some things are really really good, and um, I'm feeling better than I've ever felt and um, just enjoying the... And this is the right time for a professional uptick, isn't it? Yes. It just sort of feels right. Yeah, yeah.